I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 27th of September, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. Welcome to the show and welcome to a very sunny day, which is a nice break. We've had a lot of rain for a lot of days and finally get a little bit, a little bit of sun. You'll notice I'm on yet another hat as I still don't have my main hat back. This is actually my good one. This is my 10 year old one that got me into Jack Wolfskin so many years ago. We have a guest cat who just ran in front of me. Hello, little kitten. All right, we're actually heading up the street today. Today, I don't have a lot going on. It is Tuesday. I am back from being in Esteli. It has been a very busy, uh, well, getting back anytime I've been gone. It's going to be really busy when I get back, right? Because I got to do lots of catch up. I spent like the entire day uploading and downloading videos. I have like nothing particular to tell you about my day, so I'm not going to. We're going to go for a little bit of walk because a lot of people are interested in property. Uh, <laughs> everyone's been asking me, so I'm going to zip by and try to get some pictures and stuff of this one. So this is, I am at the corner. Um, this street up here is second here in La Borio. And this property, as far as I can tell, begins at this garage. So this line right here seems to be the back of this really large corner house. I could be wrong as to the size, but I'm pretty sure this is a garage door that leads into an open space. I think I can actually see it. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, this is a large open space back here. So you pull a car in and there is a building at this wall, but there's open space there. And then, sorry, future Scott here breaking in. I have to update this episode a little bit before it posts. So the house that I show you on the corner here is actually already under negotiations, but I did get some information about it, which I wanna share with you guys, just because it adds something to the overall picture. So what we know is that they are asking 100,000 US for it. Um, and I managed to get a walkthrough. Wow, that's loud. I managed to get a walkthrough of the house in the future, and that is going to be posted here in a couple of days. Um, so while the house is probably already uh, sold, um, it is, uh, I think, a really good example of what uh, a house could cost uh, and what you could get for that. So we'll talk about what price it actually ends up going for, hopefully, uh, in in the near future. But for the moment, what we know is the asking is 100,000. They did make a point that it was negotiable, so it's clearly not 100,000. But whether that's, you know, 20,000 or 99,000, we don't know. Uh, that's, that's to be seen. But um, it is a, a really nice house. And we have an, an awesome, like, 12-minute walkthrough talking about the entire structure coming up in just a couple days. So stay tuned for that. Um, in the meantime, we're going to be looking for more properties around town and uh, keeping you guys up to date because this is fun, right? Like, I really like looking at houses and all that stuff, which is why I'm starting a channel about looking at houses. Uh, but remember, I don't do real estate agentry stuff at all. So there's none of that. I'm not selling any houses. None of these are like represented by me or anything like that. Just I'm just walking around town and finding stuff that might be fun to look at because it's fun. That's that's why. All right. Back to the house. I have no idea how big this house is. I don't know how many bedrooms. It is a cool location. It comes with this dog. Uh, it has some beautiful neighboring houses right here. So this is a nice spot in the neighborhood. And, uh, hola. And then you have this nice frontage here is a very large spot. I'm gonna try to get across the street so you can actually see it a little bit. Hola. So you can see this is a pretty wide lot. Not super wide, but but definitely on the wide side. And then it goes really deep. It is a large spot. And then being on a corner has a lot of open space to the outside. So you have a lot more opportunity for air. And it's a tall structure. And uh, this is a marketing company right here with this beautiful house next to it. Um, so you can see the main roof right there. Now we have no idea if the building ends there and that's open courtyard, but that tree is definitely part of the structure. So somewhere behind it, there is a tree growing in that space. So that is the house. I'm gonna zip up because we also have a property up the street that is for sale that I know of. And I'm gonna provide what information I have about that. So we're heading up there. I don't have a lot of time today, unfortunately, but I have a number of places I know are for sale and I wanna show some because people have been asking so much. I also wanna give you a heads up that in a couple days, today's the 27th, it is Tuesday. On Thursday, the 29th, I am going to be traveling uh, around town a little bit and doing a tiny bit of filming uh, with April, my new co-host, for the show Central American Living. We are trying to get uh, some content out for that. Now, I have to do a lot of filming for that, 
so it's going to be a little bit challenging to make content for you guys while I'm doing that. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to get over to the shade and let you see the street over here. This gives you kind of a... So Invala is here. This is a nice business. I really like so we're just, I mean, we've only gone a minute. So nice house there, little one there, this big business here. And then we've got this blue building here, which I bet is for rent. I'm gonna go get that information in two seconds. Got a, got a taxi here. There's a lot available in La Barrio, believe it or not. Well, that is advertising for an architect, not, not uh, rental. And then what's interesting here is the Sagrada Corazon de Jesus Farmacia. So this building right here. Okay, so this is a garage door, main entrance door. This used to be a pharmacy not too long ago. The structure is in terrible shape. Uh, if you can see above, I'm going to put the camera up as high as I can. There are some trees in there. Those are, I'm told, mango trees, and they're in the courtyard. This is a very deep lot, uh, but the structure is essentially worthless, so it needs to be torn down and rebuilt. The asking price on this, I know, is $60,000. is negotiable. Um, I've talked to people, and they say that is an insane price, which is what I thought as well. A lot should be a lot closer to like $15,000, especially if there's no structure on it that you want to use, and even more, especially if there's a structure on it you have to tear down and take away, that'll cost extra money. That doesn't make it more desirable, that makes it less desirable. But it is in a great part of La Borio, is in the middle of things. So the location is definitely wonderful. Um, it's a nice street. It's not the main road, so it's a lot more quiet here than on my street, just because you're not next to the church and you're not, like traffic is much slower and lighter. So that's worth noting, um, but so it's available, but it's, I do know it's being sold by Americans. Um, so, so those prices are, you know, definitely gringo prices being said to me uh, by, by people who want to uh, try to convince an American to buy something really expensive, which makes no sense because I already own places here. So my desire to overpay for something is really really low i have absolutely no need for it whatsoever uh <laughs> so uh but that's one i know these are available in this very small space right here that's a very loud dog at the pulperia and then i have one more over here i don't know how much i'm gonna be able to show but these are all just like with i'm just going around one block here between fourth and second i'm actually coming up on the church i should spin, spin the camera around because this will give you a really good reference of where we are so this is the Gimnasio Muscle Power right there. And there is the church. So you should be able to find us on Google Maps really easily from that. And then this yellow and brown house here. I don't know what those real colors are uh, with the open door. That one is available. Uh, and they are currently asking 110 move in ready. One bedroom, one bath with garage. And that that is the same uh, sellers as the last one that we just looked at. So those are all of interest, and that is right by the church. Obviously, this is a prime location. People like to be right next to the church. Personally, I prefer not to. This is where all the fireworks are, uh, where the traffic is on this street. This street right here, very quiet. So that's not bad, uh, not very quiet, very little traffic. I can't say quiet as I'm shouting over the traffic, but it's a nice little location. Um, and I'm standing at the ice cream shop across from the church. Now, if those are not what you're looking for, I do know some other places that are available and everybody's been interested. So I'm gonna walk over there. I'm just gonna teleport for you so that you don't have to uh, travel along with me over there. But I'm gonna go down to uh, Fifth and I'm pretty sure I can find something that's available down there and just show you what there is. So. Let's go explore. I also have to go grab some phone numbers, so I'm going to take a few minutes for the sun. I'll be down there. All right, now we are in La Borio on 5th. And now I'm going to do real quickly to give you a reference. I'm sorry, I've got to... Well, I'm going to do as little turning of the camera as possible. So we're looking eastbound on 5th. So we are just below 
Uh, fourth and second, we're down the hill just a little bit. So this yellow along here, this is the bottom of the school. And then immediately after it, if you can see it in the distance, that is the bottom of the La Iglesia of the church here at La Borio. So you're in the visible school and church zone. And if we're looking here, that is the hot dog stand that you often see. And uh, so we, we film here quite often. We have some really nice houses here on the corner. This tall, narrow, actually this lot is, is wide. It just has a, a second floor that's narrow. Um, I'm not sure if this is connected or independent to these. And then this one is for sale, this turquoise one here. So I'm gonna close in. It's very narrow, but it could go quite deep. And this might be its garage on the right. I just have no way to tell. But given a few of the features, I'm actually gonna say it is its garage because that is a continuous fence across there. Um, they may have it separated so that it's meant to be an apartment currently. So this is for sale or rent. I'm sure you can see the details there, 869-55588. Any number that starts with an eight, I believe is a Tigo, and any that starts with a six is a Claro. So not very many details about this, but we do have a number to potentially call, and it is a fantastic location. But yeah, notice the roof line is continuous. Everything is continuous except for the paint. Uh, so that is almost certainly all one building. It's probably you rent the two sides separately, and if you buy it, you get the whole thing. So that's a number of options that are available right now here in La Barrio. Uh, I'm going to start paying a lot more attention as I walk around because there are so many places available and the only way to know them is to like get really lucky on like Facebook Marketplace or um, walk around and actually find them. And no one walks around to find them except for me. So apparently that's something I'm just going to have to start doing, but that would be really interesting and I have a feeling a lot of people will really like it. So maybe that makes sense. Let me know. Comments below. Definitely give me a like and subscribe because I'm out here doing this stuff for you guys. Um, so I'm just going to talk real quickly. I don't actually have a pretty short day to film today, um, but I think those are good things to touch on and I'm just going to wander this way and see if anything comes up on this road. So uh, we're doing some work with some house stuff and we needed to look at several things this week, which, which you'll see on a couple of the different channels. So there'll be stuff coming of, of interest there, but um, I kept warning everyone not to speak to the real estate agents, to the buyer's agents, because of all the reasons I keep warning about on this channel, don't, don't even engage with them. It was just a waste of your time. You could end up getting misled, like you'll get bad information. It is not a good idea. And Dominic and I have this, this story, it's hardly a horror story, but we worked with one of the agencies that claims to be big here in Leon and in San Juan. And basically everybody who watches this has the same reaction. Oh, he must mean some other agency than the one I'm working with. The one I'm working with would not be, it's always the agency you think that it isn't, always. Every person says to me, oh, but it's not this one. And it's always that one. So we called this agency, I didn't, my partner did, and uh, oh, I gotta walk away from this car. All right, we gotta escape because there's no way getting away from this noise. Actually, I'm gonna record this for a second um, and explain what's going on. So this is a funeral announcement car. So these come through when someone dies, you pay to have this car come around, and what they do is they make the announcements for the funeral. They tell you who died, when their funeral's gonna be, who they've been left behind. It's basically an obituary being read along with the invite to the funeral. And they drive through with, with loudspeakers through all the neighborhoods uh, where the person lived or, or had family or whatever and, and let them know because there's no newspaper and, and there isn't a real stable online system for looking this stuff up. So this is what they do. So I'll show this. El señor Martín Castillo Sarria ha pasado a la presencia del señor. Su esposa, señora Ivania Vargas, hoy viuda de Castillo. Sus hijos, José Martín Castillo y señora, Edwin Castillo y señora, Elvin Castillo y señora, hermanos Castillo Sarria, sus cuñados, Denis Vargas. So it's a really interesting, I hope you can hear me, it's a really interesting cultural thing that this is how they announce funerals uh, instead of making a newspaper announcement or whatever. And uh, in some ways, it's a bit... It's a bit rough because we can't film or anything because of it. Uh, it's so loud, but it's, it's something you don't see other places that I've never seen anywhere else. I've seen something a little bit like it in Italy, but, but that's about it. 
hopefully, hopefully you can hear me. I'm going to walk just a little bit, uh, and then we'll come back. All right, we are back. So, Dominica's Horror Story, we wanted to look at some houses before we got the one that we're living in now in Leon. And in doing so, I told her not to call the agencies, but she did anyway. And she called the agency, and when she did, they were like, oh yeah, we have lots of houses to show you, of course. And so, they were ready to sell us all kinds of apartments, apparently assuming we were not in country. Once they learned we were in Leon and ready to go look at places and going on their website and looking at the houses that they had, they suddenly went from, oh, we'd love to show you houses to, oh, I'm sorry, we don't have any we can show you. And when we showed up at one of the ones that they were claiming they were selling, it, up until we got there, they kept being like, yes, it's got this many bedrooms, it's, this, it's a good place, it'd be a good fit for you. And once we actually got to it and were waiting outside and said, can someone come let us in with the keys, they suddenly admitted it's not a standing structure inside, it's just an outside wall, the whole thing's decrepit, and they can't possibly le lease it. And they had nothing else to show us and would not talk to us further. That was it. Their entire website full of things to show was fake, and the houses that, even if you showed up to it, it's fake. And that was, that was a really telling moment where we saw when they thought we were foreign, when they didn't know that we had a way to check in on them, they were all ready to take our first month's, first month's rent, get us moved into a place sight unseen. They were so happy to work with us. The moment we were actually here and needed to actually see something, everything changed. They avoided us completely. And we actually went to the place and saw it. it was, they were correct, it was not a real building. And so this was really, really fishy. Now, real quickly before I continue, so the funeral car just went by and I have no idea if they're connected, but this is a house setting up for a funeral. The funerals are held out in the street. They get these, it's pretty universal, they get these canopies and they set up the white chairs all outside and they have a huge wake and everybody faces into the house for the service and there's all kinds of food. This goes on for, for like an entire day. It's like a really, really busy thing. So we see those a lot, I never get to show them, and since I just had the car and this all at once, it was a perfect time to show that to you. So we learned a lot about how the real estate was attempting to make money on, without any existing inventory, without representing any actual houses. So I always warn people, this is how it works, and I tell them, it's this agency, don't, don't bother calling them, it's completely fake. Uh, but no one ever believes me. Like, just nobody believes me. It's crazy how it's like everyone I know has the same experience and everyone goes through the same, I don't believe you, I'm gonna call them anyway. Oh my gosh, the same thing happened to me. Now I believe you. It's like, it's nuts. Okay, so we're just down the street here. We're on six and this is um, a place that is listed as for sale, but those numbers are illegible. I'm going to guess that that says five, seven, one, five, because there's no cross. Nine, five, seven, seven, I think. That's the best I can make out. Oh, here's a different number. Five, seven, four, two, nine, seven, four, zero. I have no idea. It's for sale. Not, it is, yes. <laughs> he said it's for sale. Save end day. Um, okay, so. We had the same experience again. Here, I'm gonna turn you around because the sun is behind me. And uh, so my partner called the same place, knowing the experiences we had, but sure, but she was sure because their website was full of places that looked interesting. So she looked on their website, got a list of places, and was like, okay, I'm interested in these. Called them and said, okay, do you have anything you can show me? And they basically didn't respond. So first of all, she, re she wrote to them in Spanish because she's been living here for a long time, speaks Spanish. They decided to write back in English, which is really telling um, that they were pushing to make this an English thing. And even though she asked for long-term homes, they came back and said, oh, we're going to find you a, a perfect vacation home. She's like, no, I've lived here for, you know, half my life. Uh, I'm not looking for a vacation home. I'm looking for normal city apartment like any normal person living here would. And that took a bit to convince them of. And there was no way to get them to, to speak in Spanish. They would reply in English regardless of what Spanish she used. Not a big deal, but weird. And, and then once she said, I want to actually go look at places, I'm here, I would like to go look tomorrow, suddenly it was, well, we don't, we don't have anything for you. And so she sent them all the links from their website and said, well, what about these places you're advertising? Um, yeah, they're not available. 
So none of the ones that they claimed to have actually existed. Then she kept pushing and finally they're like, well, we can show you this one. And they sent a house we were already at, not just that we knew about, not just that we knew a different agency had it, but that we were already in. And they advertised it for quite a bit more money than the asking price, not than the price they got, than the asking price they asked quite a bit more. So the markup for the agency, who didn't even have the house as a listing, they just went on other agencies' websites and tried to resell some other agency's house at a much higher price, or a bit higher price at least. And that was the experience. They had no agency of their own. They didn't represent any properties, at least none that they could show or tell us about. They had absolutely no service, no ability to work in Spanish, didn't understand the idea of homes here. They only understand tourist rentals, a huge, huge markup, only gringo prices, and had fewer resources to find houses that were available through other people than we did. We were able to go look at multiple houses in a day with minor effort. They were unable to show any. They're the agency. We're just people walking around and using Facebook. So that's really telling. That's so consistently the experience. I cannot, wow, I cannot overstate how much every person I talk to either has a story of how they overpaid by some dramatic amount and generally had a bad experience, but they will very rarely describe it that way because people won't, right? They'll be like, oh no, I feel like it was a good deal. Or like, you pay three times what anyone else paid. Yes, but after the fact, what do you do? You defend your decision, right? <laughs> because because you, feel, you feel embarrassed, maybe not to other people, but to yourself, right? We always, well, there was some reason I paid that much. There must, I must have been had a logical reason at the time. It's not how human brains work, but, but then the, uh, so half the people have that story. Nobody has ever given me a story of, I got a great deal, right? Like, oh man, I bought this place. I went through this process. I called this buyer's agent and, and they actually did a whole bunch of work, evaluated my needs and found something for me that I couldn't have found on my own and got me a price that's as good as I would have gotten some other way. I've never heard that story ever. Um, and then tons of people get the, I tried and they didn't even have anything. The whole, there was no, there's nothing behind them. And, and when, when we worked with them years ago, we worked with so many agents, we had to do all the footwork. We would find all the places, we would send them out. Then they would come back with, okay, here's a property, here's a price. We had to do all the research. We had to figure out what was out there. We had to tell them what was good. And then we had to send our own people to evaluate it and they would come back and be like, no, you don't want this property because there's no water, there's no roof, there's whatever. All the problems were not being found by the agent who's supposedly paid to find them. They were just trying to sell the place. We had to pay for our own staff to go and tell us, oh no, the agent isn't sending you real pictures. The agent is sending you fake pictures. Here's the actual pictures of the property, right? It's not a full pool that's in beautiful condition in a beautiful house. It's this falling down structure with an empty pool. I don't know where they got those pictures, but they sure didn't take them, right? They're getting them from the website somewhere or something. So that is, that is so universally the experience and it just keeps repeating. And it's been years, right? We've been in Leon for, six to eight months, the exact, must be eight, eight to nine months, the exact same experience still happening because it's a model that works, right? Bait and switch, selling something that doesn't exist, getting that first month, locking people in. They're, they're foreigners, they're temporary. What are they gonna do? They're gonna give up. They're not gonna fight in court, they can't. They're gonna lose that money and move on and that's where the money is. There's so much money in those things. Why would they stop? What recourse does anyone have against them? And when you're a local, when you're here in Nicaragua and you want to go look at those things, all they have to do is say, oh, I'm sorry, we don't have anything for you. We're not going to do business with you. And they're protected. Same way things work in the States. It's just in the States, you don't have all these people. It's, the economics are different, so it doesn't happen that way. Here, there is so much money to be made doing this thing in this way. Of course, they're going to do it. The only way to protect yourself is don't let yourself become involved. Don't walk up to someone playing three card Monty on the street and say, I'm confident I can guess which one is the queen of hearts. You cannot, there's no queen of hearts on the table. Don't engage a buyer's agent in Nicaragua and think, I know, 
Logically, there's no way for them to do a good job for me. Logically, there's nothing that aligns us. Nothing makes them want to work for me. There's, they don't have the resources to make this make sense. Don't engage. Don't give yourself the opportunity to be tricked by yourself, because that's what's gonna happen. They're not gonna trick you. You're gonna trick you. You're gonna talk yourself into, well, this is how you're supposed to do it. This is how we do it back home. This is how, this was what feels right. Emotionally, it solves something, but logically it makes no sense. Don't put yourself, this is, this is a general life thing, right? In business, we say this all the time, but it goes for all of personal life. When you know something's going to be a bad idea, when you know something is going to confuse you, when you know you're gonna be emotionally swayed in a bad way, when you know someone's gonna take advantage of you or you're gonna set yourself up to be vulnerable, simply don't do it. Stop and say, wait, that's logically a horrible decision. Walk away. And it will that, that approach protects you so much because you will always, human brains, it, this is how marketing works. Watch commercials and really pay attention. Almost every commercial tells you why the product sucks almost everyone, they'll explain clearly why you don't want to do business with them. And in doing so, they'll do so in such a tone of voice that most people watch the commercials and go, I need to buy that thing that I really believe in that product. And I say, I just watched the same commercial as you and they just explain statistically why their product was bad. Why do you believe in it? And they'll say, but no, surely they didn't say it was bad. I'm gonna go watch it again. Transcribe the words. Don't read it in their voice, read it in your voice say the words that they said. I'll give a great example because it might be hiding up here in the corner is Grammarly. Grammarly runs ads here on uh, YouTube and I see them all the time and I'm an ex Grammarly user. I gave it a try. I was not impressed. I moved on. Like they're a fine company. I like what they're trying to do. I just don't think that the product works that well mostly because it uses so many resources and gets so much wrong. Um, but if you're if you're really bad at grammar, I think it's really useful. But if you're good at grammar, it gets in your way anyway. So they have a statement though in their ad, and this blew my mind. A lot of the stuff that they show on their video ads is great, right? Oh, I don't know how to write a term paper. I said things in a really awkward way. I think your, your phrasing is awkward. You should fix that. Oh my gosh, I should fix that. My paper's better. Yes, that stuff, it's good. It's really good for students, but I think it also hobbles you and makes you unable to write and speak in person, which are things you're gonna have to do a lot in your life. And so you may not want to rely on, on the voice of a computer to speak on your behalf, just saying. Um, <laughs> but uh, so they have this thing that says 92% of, of professionals who use Grammarly believe that it makes them more efficient. My gosh, I will never install Grammarly ever again. I was not planning on it because I, I, I had a lackluster experience. But that statement is so dramatic how bad their product is according to their users. So there's a couple things that are hiding in here. It sounds good. 92% just sounds positive to people. Um, 90, so first of all, it's 92% of professionals, so we're not talking about general users. Students are not evaluating it this well, only professionals. Maybe students think better, but there's no reason to believe that. Assume it's lower, right? There's a reason why they cherry pick professionals. 92% of professionals feel it makes them more efficient. It's not what it says. 92% of professionals who use Grammarly. Let's be clear. Every person like me who does not use Grammarly but tested it, the reason we stopped using it is because we didn't find it to be efficient. Okay, we don't know if I make up the 1% or the 99% or just like 50%. We have no idea. What we do know is that people who found it to be inefficient and have any decision-making skills stopped using it. Because why would you use it if it didn't make you more efficient? You wouldn't. So of people who use Grammarly, of that remaining group, only those who go through the pain of having it installed, keeping it installed, and putting up with it, slowing down their computers a lot, only 92% of, of them think it actually works. 8% of them keep it because they like the marketing, because their boss told them to, but don't believe it does its job. That's a staggering large number of your customers who feel your product doesn't work and yet they advertise it, that's the best thing they have to advertise, that's dramatic, that's, that's telling, right? That effect, right, all they have to do is tell you stats that say how bad their product is, and you, as a human, almost every human will read those in a positive voice, 
or you'll hear them say them in a positive voice. You will say they would never say something bad about their own product. They must be saying something good about it. You will give them the benefit of the doubt is what your brain says. You will lie to yourself and say they didn't mean of only their customers. They meant of all people. Nope. They, how would they know that? They can't know that. They do mean their customers. Do they mean all of them? No, they surveyed some. Yes. Did they say professionals? They meant everyone. No, they didn't. They were carefully telling you an honest fact and allowing you to lie to yourself about each of the pieces to make it sound reasonable for them to have mentioned it. It is not reasonable for them to have mentioned it except for the fact that you would lie to yourself. And trust me, I've worked with so many professionals, trained professionals, that I will say, watch out for your brain to do these things and they will immediately go do those things, right? Even knowing to guard against it, they'll say, no, they must not mean that. Of course they don't mean that. Obviously they mean that. The people who wrote it did not add those extra words, did not make it sound stupid, did not give me the ability to tell you how dumb it is without intentionally doing so to provide the best results. Had they said anything else, I guarantee it would have looked worse. If not, they would have fired those marketing people, right? It would be even worse if their people were so dumb that they didn't know that they had just done that, right? That is not the case. They carefully, all marketing is done this way, they carefully let you sell yourself because you want to believe other people are making good products. You want to believe marketing is telling you good things that you want. It is not. That is not how marketing works, but that's what you want to believe. And you are the best salesman for any product you see. That's what's going to happen with the real estate. You will, if you give yourself an inch to say, maybe, maybe it'll be different for me. It will never be different for you. And you have made the situation where you are now already lying to yourself. And at every stage, the human brain will naturally continue to lie to itself and say, no, they, they must be trying to do the right thing for me. They must not mean that they're going to take this percentage. They must not mean that they, they don't have anything. They just, they just couldn't show, they ran out this morning. No, no, it's the same story every time. Don't lie to yourself. Don't set yourself up to be misled in life. You'll have such a better experience because you'll be in control of those things, realizing we're all emotional. And you can very rarely control those emotions, so you have to control the situations that cause those emotions. I hope that's helpful. I hope that someone buys these houses, that'd be awesome. Like and subscribe, comments below. You can buy me a coffee using the link below to directly support the channel. Love so much how much support we're getting here. Really getting a lot of traction. The stuff in Esteli went fantastic. Can't wait to bring you some really exciting stuff coming up in the next couple days. I will see all of you from Leon, Nicaragua tomorrow.